So actually, yeah. there are three potentially poisonous mineral specimens on this table right now. It seems like they're trying to kill us. It's like they don't want us to be on the next episode. <laughs> So I know it's spooky season, so we've got some spooky Halloween-y themed boxes today. I don't know what that could entail, but I'm looking forward to it. So yeah. you want to get into it? Absolutely. Let's do it. Okay, I've got a clue in my box, so I'm going to, I see Dracula. From the land of Dracula. That's Transylvania. Transylvania. Okay. And then also we should acknowledge this. This has appeared as well. Yes. It's like a little ghost. Should we do this first? Should have put circles in there. Ooh. Wow, that looks crazy. It's like so bladed. It, it looks, looks like little It looks eyes. very freaky. Okay, so what's in this box? Oh, cool. Yeah, I like oh. this. Oh, what is this? It's like Christmas on Halloween. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Before Christmas. So these are all from Romania in the general neighborhood of Transylvania, mm -hmm. Dracula's yeah. stomping grounds. So yeah, Transylvania is a region in Romania. And this. That. <laughs> and you pulled that. So there's quartz here, and then there's yeah. a, the metallic stuff that is looks, pyrite. That's my favorite part, I think. The pyrite? Yeah. The fool's gold? Yeah, because it's just like with the quartz and the calcite mm -hmm. that's right here, I think it looks so cool, just kind of peeking in. And then I think this is calcite over here. So you actually yes. have three minerals in one, which is really dope. This is a really cool like three-in-one mineral specimen where you've got quartz on one mm -hmm. side, calcite on the other side, and then in between is like this classy separation yeah. of pyrite that sort of splits it. Yeah, there's like a few places where there's, like yeah. the pyrite just like pops. Oh, and look, there's actually pyrite like in between the quartz yeah. crystals as well. That's really cool. It's like peeking through a little bit. Yeah. You know, the way that this is so spiky, and then this is so smooth. Yeah. And then this just really pops here with the pyrite. Like mm -hmm. that's just really cool. So even though quartz and calcite are two of the most common minerals in the world, mm -hmm. they are all over the place, they can come in like a really crazy variety of crystalline shapes and quartz can have a bunch of inclusions of different kinds. They're very common, but they're always like really pretty. Pyrite is really cool and it's actually, mm -hmm. it can be kind of dangerous. So it can poison like groundwater, it can make oh. it acidic. That's interesting because when you strike it with iron, mm -hmm. it creates sparks and that's where pyrite gets its name. It comes from the Greek word pyre, uh -huh. which means a gemstone that strikes fire. It forms in the cubic crystal system, mm -hmm. which means sometimes it's just a straight up, like perfect yeah. cube, like you it's been machined it or something. Bit. It's also called fool's gold because some people saw it and got really excited thinking that mm -hmm. they'd hit gold. They didn't. It was just stinky iron sulfide. So they thought they'd found a treat, but it was a trick. Okay, so I got Stib Knight, which is really gnarly looking. That looks really... like Game of Thrones. It does. Oh, yeah, it looks like the Iron Throne, but maybe got sat on. So Stib Knight is really cool. It's got that metallic luster to it, and it's also got these insane, like, needle radiating crystals that are really crazy, very Halloween looking. Yeah. So not only is it from the spooky region of the world, but also it looks pretty freaky. It's yes. a two on the most scale of hardness, which means you could scratch it with your fingernail. It looks like it. It, yeah, these little spikes will break off pretty easily and you could, your oven's hot enough to melt it. Yes. Uh, it melts at about 440 Fahrenheit. Yeah. In history, it was used in makeup and like darkening your eyelashes mm -hmm. and eyebrows and stuff. But one of the byproducts of Stib Night are antimony and um, arsenic. So you could actually potentially poison yourself. They also used to use it for like cutlery in kitchens, so you definitely don't want to do that. So this is barite, especially with because of the luster. It looks like shattered glass. Like it looks yeah. insanely sharp. What you'll also notice if you look for a second are these little, yeah, just those little cocoa puffs. So those, I, my best guess is that they're galena. And mm. galena is actually an ore of lead. And we know that lead is toxic. So actually yeah. there are three potentially poisonous mineral specimens on this table right now. Barite has a very high specific gravity, which means it's quite dense and it's heavier than it looks. Yes, because it looks, I don't know about you. It looks you. delicate, so it f looks like it shouldn't be heavy. Yeah, anytime something's like pretty translucent, I feel like it looks pretty light. It actually gets its name from the Greek word baris, which means heavy. They picked it up and they were like, oh my God, this is so baris. It's part of the orthorhombic crystal system. Yeah. This material is mostly colorless. 
Mm -hmm. But barite can actually come in a lot of colors, like yellow, green, red, and yeah. blue. So the sad part about barite is that it's really beautiful, but it's mm -hmm. what they call a gang material, which means like it's discovered as whatever they're doing, they're uninterested in the barite that they might come across. But <laughs> it's super useful, actually. It's used as like a drilling mud when we're drilling for oil, and it's also used a lot in the medical field because it can block x-ray. What they'll do is they'll like make it to, into a powder, mm -hmm. put it in a milkshake. They'll have somebody drink it and that'll coat the esophagus and they can x-ray the soft tissue of the esophagus. All right, so do you wanna grab the next box? Sure. Sometimes the monster is closer than you think. Who wrote that? Oh, that's so small. It's just a little guy. Is this Ruby? Well, the color, so it's like not okay. quality, quality, like fine ruby. And if we hit it with an ultraviolet light, we make it lucky. Oh. <gasps> yeah. Okay, that's another, that's a point to ruby. So, the, you know, there is a Transylvania County in North Carolina. <laughs> is that what the clue means? I think so. That it's, it's the Transylvania at home. So ruby is a variety of corundum. It's a nine on the most scale of hardness. The only thing really above it, famously, is diamond. The high hardness of corundum allows the rough crystals to be really bright. You know, yeah. like they, they, a lot of light will reflect off of them because they're so hard. And that, that high luster is classified as bright vitreous. This is from the Grimshaw Mine in Transylvania County, North Carolina. Fun fact about North Carolina is that it has some of the highest like mineral diversity of any other state in the mm -hmm. US. So you can find like diamond there, you can get emerald there. Wow. You find ruby and sapphire and all the shades in between. Are you ready to do the next box? Yes. Cool. Where's Buffy when you need her? Okay, well I've, I've actually never watched the show, but I do know. She's a vampire slayer? Yeah, she's a vampire, it's in the title of the show. Yeah. That's not. Wait, that's that wood. Looks like, yeah, there's wood in there. Oh, oh man. Oh, to like stab a vampire. Oh, this guy's heavy. Oh. Here, fish the other guys out of there. So, okay, this is actually a really dope piece. So these are not from Transylvania. These are just sort of, Halloween I think themed. generally Halloween-y, spooky yeah. themed. So this is just wood. It's not petrified wood. So this piece of wood made up support beams in a mine shaft in Arizona. That's so cool. So it was a copper mine. And okay. there was so much copper, the groundwater in the mine seeped into the wood and deposited the copper in between the grains of wood. So literally, the copper sheets that you see here are like part of this piece of wood. And then there's also a ton of copper like holding these rocks together on the backside of this piece. This is- That looks like something you could is, stab a vampire with. Yes, but it also looks like, look at that, that looks like snakeskin. It does, it's sort of patchy and bubbly. This is hematite. It gets its name from the Greek word for blood in allusion to its color. So we've got blood and Wood for, okay, so it's a vampire box. This is super smooth as well. Like if you just go like that, it's Very like smooth. really smooth. So if you were to streak test that, <laughs> it would actually streak red, which is why they gave it that name hematite because of the blood red color that it streaks. And it was also kind of like Stibnite. It was used in makeup and cosmetics because it's red, you know, so it's yeah. used for like blush or lipstick or whatever. Hematite's most valuable as an iron ore, so you can extract iron out of it. It can be found in like individual crystals, but it's usually a, like a pretty large sort of aggregate kind of yeah. kind of situation. And then that is also hematite. So if you look at it on edge, you'll see the base color of it is very reminiscent of this. So that's the hematite down there at the bottom. But then also the really reflective, like me almost metallic luster material is specularite hematite, given an extra name because it kind of has a mirror-like luster. That's where the specular description comes in. Yeah, exactly. So the back of it is pretty crazy too. So you can definitely see the similarity between this hematite and that specularite <laughs> hematite. Okay, we've got one last box. Do you know when the next full moon is? I don't, do you? No. Oh. In the world. That, like, okay, that, I don't know what it is yet, but it <laughs> does look spooky. It's looking like, a little eldritch right now. Yeah. And like, it's definitely like twanging. Does it? So this yeah. is native silver. This is silver, the metal, in jewelry. Okay. 
So native silver, a native metal, is just mm -hmm. a metal that can be found in its pure form in nature. Not all metals are native metals, okay. but silver is one, and this is pure silver. And sometimes it can form in dendritic, arboreal forms, so vine, fern-like or tree-like. And this mm -hmm. kind of does look like it belongs, you know, in the forest in like Nightmare Before Christmas or something yeah. like that. It's very ductile, it's very malleable, so like it bends easily, it, you can draw it out into like a really thin wire if you want to. It's very versatile. It's also very stable. It does tarnish over time, which is why it doesn't appear silver in color. It's completely tarnished, but I think to try and polish that and remove the tarnish would probably damage the the specimen. It's, it's best to just leave it alone and look at it like a spooky tree. Yeah, it's cooler like this to see it this way than to polish it for it to be shiny silver. And then that is wolfenite. So we've got silver for a silver bullet. We've got the wolf for werewolf. It's definitely not really seen ever in jewelry. Mm -hmm. It's definitely like a collector's mineral but it's got this really beautiful orange color that's actually very Halloween-y. But it can, it can be like orange brown, orange red, kind of straight up red, and it can sometimes be really gemmy. And when, it, when a yeah. mineral is described as gemmy, it's like translucent, it's gem quality, you know, it's like, it's like the pretty upgraded version. Those are tabular formations, because you know, they're like little tablets. And that is one very common crystal habit for wolfenite to form in. Okay, um, which oh, is kind more of, than one? Mm -hmm, it can, ah. it can, form in a few different shapes. So that's why I felt good IDing that as wolfenite, is the color and then also the appearance of it and yeah. its shape and its form. For wolfenite, those are huge crystals. Oh. Those are Mondo crystals. So nice. usually wolfenite crystals are individually, like a couple of centimeters across, like fractions of an inch, but those are, some of those are almost an inch long, I would say, or an yeah. inch across. So wolfenite is also pretty delicate. It looks pretty sturdy to it me. Does. For some, like it looks like a hardy mineral, but it's a three on the most scale of hardness. It's pretty common for these crystals or like little clusters of them to just sort of like break off of the matrix. Faceted wolfenite is also really challenging because it's like brittle and it mm. doesn't really want to be faceted. And also, I mean, you can kind of look at these crystals. None of them look like they would be very transparent or very attractive if they were faceted and fashioned, just because they're like opaque and they're just not large enough to allow for faceting yeah. in general. So wolfenite is a lead-based mineral, kind of like mm. some of the other ones that we've seen. So it's a little toxic. It seems like they're trying to kill us. It's like they don't want us to be on the next episode. <laughs> If it were to be faceted, it's really highly dispersive. So you know, oh. when you look at a diamond yeah. and you get all the spectral colors, yeah. like greens and reds and stuff, that stuff, wolfenite is also highly dispersive, but it's okay. just very difficult to bring that out. Do you want to take a closer look? Uh, yeah, you let's bring everything out. Okay. This is a tough choice. It really is. I liked a lot of these. I don't want you guys to miss out on a macro shot of any of these. I'm gonna, I've made my pick. Okay. Have you made yours? Yeah. Cool. Nice. Let's take a closer look. Probably my favorite video yet. And if you want to try and find something like these things, gemstones.com actually right now has four and a half million dollars worth of gemstones, but they're on sale up to 50% off some of them. So go click down in the uh, description. We've got a couple links for you. And then let us know in the comments which one of these is your favorite or maybe which gemstone are you hoping to find at the other end of one of those links. Let us know down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, ring the bell so you don't miss out on future videos.